Good evening. Welcome to International Economics. Today we're thinking about the Greek debt crisis, which is going on um, as we speak in July 2015. The current issues. The Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras urged no to a bailout. Basically, the bailout was a case where um, the European Union had asked Greece to suffer austerity, asked it to um, cause tax increases and um, cut welfare spending. Cyprus urged the Greeks to vote no to this, and they did. So as we speak, only a couple hours ago, 39% um, of the Greeks voted in favor of um, the, the bailout, and 61% voted no. So uh, Alexis Tsipras and his party um, really sort of urged the Greeks to thumb their nose at the European Union. Greek banks have closed for a week. So this is um, July 5th, 2015. Um, the banks have been closed since late June. And as it currently stands, Greek citizens may go to an ATM because the banks are closed and get 60 euros a day out. So um, the exchange rate right now is 91 um, cents to the euro. So to figure out how much that is in dollars, we take 60 euros, divide it by 0.91, and that's as if an American citizen could get $66 out of an ATM each week, as if there was some kind of government control that said you can't get more than that. Well, why is there a crisis? What's, what, what's the problem? Well, for starters, Greece has $267.5 billion of debt. And uh, this is not about the United States, but the United States has more debt. So why is it such a problem with Greece? Well, Greece is a much smaller country. America has 300 million people. Greece, about 11 million. Um, also, uh, if you look at the next item, Greece really doesn't have absolute or comparative advantage in anything except for tourism. So if you want to tour the, the Parthenon in Greece or certain other um, historical items, well, they have absolute advantage in that because you can't uh, tour ancient Greece anywhere else except in Greece. But with the exception of tourism, really no absolute or comparative advantage. So it's very hard to see how they'd ever repay the 267.5 billion in your in you know euros in debt it happened because uh, the economy in greece collapsed in 2008 2009 just like it did everywhere else however what's been different is while most of us bailed or i'm sorry most of us bounced back most countries most economies bounced back after the um, crisis of 2008 2009 greece really didn't and we've been asking them, not so much we Americans, but the world, led by the European Union, has asked Greece to um, endure austerity ever since. Now, one note that's not in the um, slide here is that Greece is a smaller economy than the state of Virginia. So it's compared to the state of Oregon, which is a um, medium-sized state, a little bit smaller than Virginia. Just a point here that austerity means, just what I said earlier, tax increases, so that bothers taxpayers, and welfare spending goes down, so that bothers retirees. Well, let's look for a minute at who owns the Greek debt. Who stands to lose if, Greek doesn't, if Greece doesn't repay? Well, the European Union provided bailout loans of $185 billion. The International Monetary Fund and the European Central Bank uh, provided emergency financing of $39.5 billion. U.S. banks, although not the U.S. government, provided $11.3 billion. And then all other banks throughout the world provided $31.7 billion. The big takeaway here is that there's very little private money in Greece anymore. So um, it's not a good investment. So what's my prediction? What's going to happen? 
Well, the world's going to have to be very tough for a short period of time. And the reason is that Mr. Cyprus um, thumbed his nose at the European Union and said, we're, you know, we're not going to endure any more austerity. Indeed, um, a few predecessors were sort of driven from office. And Mr. Cyprus comp uh, campaigned on um, an idea that he was going to end austerity. So the European Union is going to have to initially be tough with him. So I would imagine for 7 to 30 days now, this is July 5th, I'm you know, guessing that uh, until July 13th or up until August 5th, um, it may appear that the other major world economies are going to do nothing. However, in my prediction, Greece is too important to Europe and to the U.S. politically, and Mr. Cyprus knows that. And when I say politically, I really mean militarily. Greece is being courted by Russia right now, and you may realize that, although technically Russia and the United States are allies, um, and Russia and European Union are allies, um, th there are conflicts throughout the world, most notably in the Ukraine. Also, Greece is the closest um, non-Middle Eastern country to the European Union, and so it's really the front line of defense with immigrants leaving many of the um, Middle Eastern economies and heading north. So my prediction is that in the end, the European Union and quite probably the United States will agree to some sort of bailout, and that a bail bailout will sound tough. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be tough, but it's certainly going to have to sound tough. A third um, rationale for why I think the bailout will occur is that German and um, U.S. and other banks are owed 40 to 45 billion dollars, and um, you know the European Union will be anxious to see um, the other countries get that out. European governments are owned, owned European governments are owed the rest, which means. You know, why did they loan the money in the first place? And it's for these reasons I mentioned above. Are they really going to throw this money away now and um, just leave Greece to Russia, the Middle East, wherever? Um, who can say? Which is my point here. Who can say? Who knows for sure? Certainly not me. You heard my predictions. Um, in time, you'll be able to test if they're right or wrong. And the source for... Um, all these items that I've uh, given you this evening are from BBC News on July 5th, 2015 today, about 7.30 p.m., and it's about 9.30 p.m. as I record this. Take care, uh, good luck, and let me know if you have questions. Good night.